Hi Founders fans, Jason here, and today we're going to talk about that time the Chief Justice of the United States of America tried to kill himself. Yes, that's a thing that happened. Not only that, but he was a committed patriot from before the beginning. His name was John Rutledge. I hope that name sounds familiar to you. It should sound familiar to every American, but much like most of the Founders I speak about on this channel, he is extraordinarily overlooked. John Rutledge, at just 26 years old, traveled from South Carolina all the way to New York City to be a member of the Stamp Act Congress in 1765, well before war broke out. And he was already complaining about Britain at that point. Nine years later, when the First Continental Congress meets, and now in his mid-30s, John Rutledge goes, and he's a delegate, and he signs the Continental Association, which is one of the major founding documents of the United States. It helped organize the original boycott against Great Britain. Two years later, South Carolina writes a new constitution. It's, it's uh, re re the, the, the rebel government is established. They write a new constitution. And John Rutledge is elected the first president of South Carolina. President, of course, at that time they meant governor of South Carolina, but some of the colonies and new states would use the term president instead. So Rutledge leaves the Continental Congress in early 1776. He's replaced by his younger brother, Edward, who signs the Declaration of Independence, who was one of the youngest members. Uh, in an earlier video, I discussed uh, Thomas Lynch, who replaced his father and was also one of the younger delegates. Uh, also from South Carolina, now that I think about it, a lot of, uh, a very, a lot of young men from South Carolina, apparently. Um, so John Rutledge just missed signing the Declaration of Independence. He'd already been to the Stamp Act Congress and signed the Continental Association. Missed that, goes home, he's president. Once independence is declared, he's elected the first governor of South Carolina. South Carolina being in a very important, very important state during the Revolution, especially in military affairs. While he's governor, he's able to stave off two attempted invasions of South of Charleston. Um, unfortunately, the third invasion, famously, they did not win. Uh, uh, John Rutledge was able to get out of town and not be captured, which I know, as the technically commander-in-chief of the state militia, is not the best look. Uh, for example, Thomas Jefferson around the same time would receive the same criticisms when he uh, when during attacks on Virginia when he left the capital um, as governor but but John Rutledge was a stellar patriot and his reputation was still good to the point where uh, after the war was won John Rutledge was sent to the Continental Congress where by which I should have said the Constitutional Convention so many C's in all these words he went to the Constitutional Convention, where he played an important part in the deliberations. In fact, he was the uh, chairman of the Committee of Detail. Now, the Committee of Detail was responsible for uh, writing the, the drafts of the Constitution. As new uh, decisions were made, they'd write a new draft, and then you know they'd make some more decisions and write a new draft and make more decisions and write a new draft. And he was in charge of the committee that wrote these drafts. And what's very interesting is many things that ended up in the Constitution fairly quickly were parliamentary, how should I say, um, procedural things that were so common throughout all of the colonial governments and all the European governments that they didn't think twice about even debating them. Uh, uh, nothing, I, I don't have anything prepared or that comes to mind, um, but, but simple things that were, again, just procedural, you know. And because of this, they just wrote them in the first draft, and they never got taken out and never got debated. So there are several, again, things that we, everyone, not even just we, just everyone took for so for granted that they didn't even care that it was just in there. Um, and then, you know, John Rutledge signs the Constitution. Two years later, George Washington is nominating people for the Supreme Court. And who does he nominate as one of the original Associate Justices of the United States Supreme Court? John Rutledge, 
who at this point had, you know, from 1965, he had 25 years of being a Patriot under his belt. He was there from before the beginning. Now, famously, John Jay was the first Chief Justice, and, and Jay would uh, go to Europe and sign the Jay Treaty while he was Chief Justice. And upon his return, Jay left and went and became Chief uh, Governor of New York. So Washington needed a new Chief Justice. He looked around and he saw that the best candidate was John Rutledge. And he appointed John Rutledge to be interim Chief Justice. He also submitted him to Congress to be approved as the new official Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Now, before the vote for him... Now, so he was acting Chief Justice of the United States. But before the vote to confirm him as official Chief Justice, um, he made, uh, I'll say, an ill-informed speech, uh, speaking ill on the Jay Treaty, and not only criticizing Jay and the treaty, but actually criticizing Washington for supporting the Jay Treaty, very specifically criticizing Washington, which was, you know, a no-no. <laughs> and uh, because of this, his career quickly, like, he uh, he was not approved. Because Washington basically said, never mind, don't approve this guy. Uh, instead, through his support behind um, uh, Oliver Ellsworth of Connecticut, who would be the third Chief Justice. Um, and Rutledge was just beside himself. Like, what, what have I done? Like, I've ruined my career. To the point where, yeah, he decided to throw himself off Charleston Harbor into the ocean. Because, well, apparently, his mistake was so grievous that he didn't think life was worth living anymore. Luckily for him, there were two slaves passing by, who, uh, unknown slaves, not his slaves, I don't know whose slaves they were, um, or who the slaves were, I should say, to be correct about it. Um, but they were passing by and they saw this dude jump into the water. So they jumped in and pulled him out and saved his life. Unfortunately, that's the sad ending of his career. He goes into retirement. Many of his opponents, he suddenly had a lot of opponents, and many of them claimed he was losing his mind. Um, committing suicide, or attempting suicide definitely doesn't help verify your mental health is very strong. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. We don't know. You know, sometimes, again, I can't speak to mental health, really. I'm not in the field. Um, but unfortunately, that was that. And really one of the most, one of the most important patriots throughout the revolution was John Rutledge. And his career came to just the worst kind of end. So, I hope you enjoyed this story. It was fun until the end where it got to be kind of a bummer. Um, but I do want to just say I went to the um, uh, conference this weekend, uh, the Sullivan Clinton Convention in Fort. Uh, it was in Johnstown, New York. But it was put on by the good people at the Fort Plain Museum, and this is the second convention I've attended that they threw, and it was fantastic as always. I learned a ton. I did try and do some live streaming. Um, unfortunately, I can't live stream through YouTube. I have to use another program that like lies to YouTube and tells them that I have a thousand followers and a certain amount of hours of viewing time. So if you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please hit like so that uh, my videos will get in front of more people and I can get up to that 1,000 subscriber number. That's the magic number. That means I can... YouTube live from my cell phone, uh, and I can, so when I'm on the road and things like that, I can go live, and it means I could monetize, so if there are advertisements at the beginning, uh, I get a small percentage of that instead of it all going to YouTube, which would be great, because then I could buy a real camera, and better lighting, and again, make a nicer studio, but, you know, that's just a nice dream, I'm sure we'll get there one day. Make sure you hit like. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see the next video. Hopefully isn't such a downer at the end. Anyway, I'm Jason. Thank you for watching.